Welcome back to Upfront. The Democratic primary field for Wisconsin's 2022 U.S. Senate race just keeps growing. State Senator Chris Larson became the most recent candidate to join the race. The field already includes Milwaukee Bucks Executive Alex Lazry, State Treasurer Sarah Godlewski, out of Gamey County Executive Tom Nelson, and Wausau Radiologist Jillian Bettina. We've been talking with the declared candidates, and Senator Chris Larson joins us now on Upfront. So we appreciate you being here with us. And you know, Democrats, they are so focused on beating Senator Johnson. How do you differentiate yourself from the other people running in your party? What would you say is your lane? Yeah, uh, I would say that I'm the proven progressive in this race who has been leading for the last 10 years in the state legislature. Uh, also somebody who has uh, run against big money in the past, which I think as our campaign theme of making sure that we unrig the system so that it works for everybody, not just the super rich, uh, I think is pretty attractive to people across the political spectrum. Of course, for uh, progressives, um, but for also folks who are suffering with a low minimum wage and not able to afford a single bedroom apartment anywhere in the state, as well as small farmers, right, uh, who have been shouldered out of the market uh, by big ag and a system that favors growth uh, above sustainability. Uh, so that's uh, that's what we're going for, that and building on the grassroots momentum that I've had with campaigns in the past. Uh, and I think we'll we'll do well uh, in taking on Ron Johnson um, and what he's done to uh, take our state in the wrong direction. And, and speaking of campaigns in the past, you're currently a state senator, but you ran unsuccessfully for Milwaukee County Executive in 2016 and 2020. So what do you say to people in terms of why you're running for several different offices? Sure. I mean, it's always to try and make sure we're improving the community. Um, and so I think that's that's something that I've always done. And sometimes it's about picking the fight, whether you win or lose. Uh, and in the case of when I've run for uh, local office, it's about making sure that we didn't have our parks up for sale and that we weren't uh, seeing things going in the wrong direction. Uh, so those have achieved uh, achieved those, those goals. Um, and frankly, sometimes uh, you got to pick a fight just to be able to pick it and move the pendulum. In this case, beating Ron Johnson is the most important thing for our country. This is a guy who has spent his career bettering himself of building his own wealth to the point where he wrote a special provision in the last Trump tax cuts so that he could nearly double his wealth and become the sixth richest U.S. senator. And then just a few years later, voting against uh, benefits that would have helped folks uh, suffering through the pandemic. This is a guy who has apologized and uh, sided with domestic terrorists who tried to overthrow our democracy, uh, siding with them over police officers and, and uh, with the people of uh, our country who want to see a democracy function, right? And this is a guy uh, who has decided that he is going to rail against science and question uh, life-saving medicine and life-saving uh, um, ideas in favor of uh, kook remedies uh, to the point where he got banned from YouTube. Um, so the point on this one is very clear. Uh, we have to separate ourselves. We have to make sure that this guy is out of office uh, and the future of our country depends on it. Would you run if he decided not to? Uh, I think Ron Johnson's going to be running. I don't know what he's going to uh, what he's going to end up doing. Um, I, I do agree that the with the uh, state's largest newspapers uh, that have said that he should resign and be out of office because he is not serving the people. Um, and I think it's going to do we, we should be doing everything in our power to make sure that he is out of office. Um, he is the opponent. Um, if he decides to step aside, that's up to him. But all indications are that he's going to try and stay there and continue to rig the system so he can make even more money off the backs of uh, hardworking Wisconsinites. I do want to talk a little bit about Medicare for all, because last week the Supreme Court decided to leave the Affordable Care Act in place. I saw you tweeted about this right away. Part of your campaign is to advocate for Medicare for all. But there are so many different proposals out there. I mean, how would you get this done? Yeah, uh, to be able to get Medicare for all. Well, mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a good roadmap, and that is to follow literally every uh, industrialized country across the planet. Uh, that has done this, in some cases has done it for decades. It's about guaranteeing that uh, health care access is guaranteed for every man, woman, and child. Uh, that is something right now that is so novel that we don't even have a real health care system. If a person gets sick, they end up having to measure whether it's worth a deductible. Um, and if they are um, diagnosed and they have medicine uh, prescribed to them, they have to weigh whether the, the insurance company is going to let them get the uh, prescription uh, without going broke doing it. Um, personal bankruptcy, the number one cause of personal bankruptcy in the country is still medical expenses. 
right now. And at the same time, we spend more per capita than any other country on health care. And so um, I'd say the question should be reversed in that how can we not afford to guarantee health care for every man, woman, and child and let people die unnecessarily uh, because they are, are uh, uh, keeping themselves away from, from care because they can't afford it? Senator Chris Larson, thank you. Thank you. Next, what Wisconsin GOP lawmakers saw at the Arizona audit. Could they try to launch an audit of presidential election results in Wisconsin?